and it's really like keeping an open mind you know like so look around keep an open mind and don't get stuck on i want to take this particular photo hey wiki hunters welcome back to the art of photography podcast where we share our passion as a photographer and we share how photography has brought um hope purpose and even happiness through our life so today we have um someone very special uh from perth um i met him back during um one of the project it's called the 730 project um we were we were doing that as a fundraising um and he is definitely one of the top perth um event photographer and one of the most creative photographer out there. Um, he definitely find uh, beautiful things in the ordinary, ordinary things. So I'm very excited to welcome Johannes. How are you doing, Johannes? Yeah, yeah, good. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, great. Yeah. How's things back in Perth? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> we, we don't have much uh, COVID restrictions, or so life goes mostly normal. Man, it's crazy it's to see. Quite amazing. That. Really, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, like, uh, it's it's crazy how people can, you know, all the everything's open, the venues and stuff like this. So it's practically back mm. in Como. I guess that's the one um, advantage being the most isolated city in the world, eh? Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, like, thanks a lot for coming in. And, um, yeah, we met on, you know, that uh, 730 project there. And um, I think that was the first time I met you, um, which was a little bit embarrassing because um, you, you're very... You know, like it looks like everyone knows you, and you got definitely one of the the top um, photographers back in Perth, um, especially to learn from. Um, give us a little bit, um, just introduction about yourself. Um, you know, where you uh, where you're coming from, and um, what type of photography you do, and how you kind of get there. Okay, so I uh, I come from Germany. That's where the accent is. I moved to Australia. I think I was 25. And I live here for 20 years already. And I started photography probably around 25 years ago, like proper where I bought my first SLR camera and then really gotten into it. And um, in the last 17, 2003, I started going out professionally. So maybe like after seven, eight, nine years uh, being really keen photographer. So I, I shot a wedding uh, at, at a you know, we went to a wedding and I took some pictures and that turned out better than the ones from the wedding photographer. And the same thing happened again that year for another wedding. And then I thought I'm becoming a wedding photographer. <laughs> so I started, <laughs> yes, I started off as a wedding photographer, um, you know, just saying, okay, I'm a wedding photographer now. And that's what I do. And, uh, you know, and then learning and then more learning and then digital came around and then everything had to be learned kind of new, you know, with computers and color management and all that. And then, and then after a couple of years, I didn't really pick up my camera anymore um, because I associated picking the camera up with work. And, and then through some coincidence, and there was this photographer, like PIP Photographers in Perth group on Flickr. And, um, and people been like going out and meeting each other. And I, I, I always did photography in isolation, really. And, and so, oh, there's other people like me. Isn't it amazing? And then so I went out and to the meets and we shared the photos after on online. I mean, it's all normal now, but back then uh, that was like the start of the internet, so to speak. And then I really, uh, that reignited my passion for photography. And I, I also realized what I've lost with, you know, not picking up the camera for myself anymore, for my own work, um, just for playing around. And then, yeah, and then I never stopped, you know, taking pictures for myself and, and my personal work is really important to me. Like, I mean, I'm really busy doing professional work, which I kind of shoot everything nowadays, but I concentrate on events and especially performance and a bit of commercial and a bit of everything and, and teaching, obviously. Um, so it's it's a nice variety nowadays that I can... So yeah, would you say cool, that... Uh, sorry, would you say that um, performance and art um, photography is your main passion? Um, is that why you kind of, um, you know, sway into that c categories or? No, I think, well, yes and no. Um, performance photography used to be a passion because it was so 
you know, it's such a different world and I, I love, um, you know, having access and, and the camera is a bit like a passport as, as the saying goes. So you, yeah, I, 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 um, I had total passion for performance photography and now I'm doing it for maybe over 10 years. And then, so it's not, you know, I, I really love it, but it's, it's kind of, it's not this strange exotic world anymore. It's everything kind of becomes quite normal, which is really interesting, isn't it? And, um, it's definitely a passion, but at the moment I'm, I'm, I'm more kind of interested in my personal work. I'm more interested in like, um, which sometimes performance matches like themes like light and shadow and alienation and life and death and loneliness and, and subcultures, which, which performance obviously part of, um, yeah, that's, that's really cool. Um, I think definitely one of the, the photo that really catch caught my eyes um, on that project was that just that the way you play with the shadow, um, you know, playing that contrast, it was, it was, I, I never actually um, do that in previous to, to that. It was, it was mostly about, you know, trying to get that even lighting, um, make sure oh, okay. that all the subject is light up. And it was, it was definitely a big mind shift when I, when I first saw that, I was like, wow like you know like you you don't have to see the dark like you don't have to see what's under the shadow it actually could create something like quite unique about it so that that was really cool to see um what what inspires you to um you know to 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 do that kind of photography in the first place is it just as a like um accident that you kind of come across it or was there an inspiration somewhere along the, the line there not a that all really leads back to my childhood um, because I, I've been really drawn to, you know, there used to be black and white photographs in magazines and papers. I don't know where I've seen them, uh, but I've been really drawn to, yeah, with the, the, the stark contrast, the images, which, which they sometimes used to do. And then when I had a camera, I kind of tried to do that. And obviously it doesn't quite work like that. And then you come to Australia and the sun is so much harsher than in Europe, as you know, <laughs> um yeah it's it's crazy like in germany if i shoot in the middle of the day it's it's like a kind of overcastish almost overcastish day here the light's really soft in comparison and in perth we have this extraordinary hard light so you can create you know if you're exposed for the highlights and your shadows become really deep and dark and and i really love that kind of effect and i'm i'm naturally drawn towards it that just sort of an extension of myself really well, that's that's really interesting, you know, like because um, you know um, most photographers look for that soft light, right? Where 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 thoughts yeah. like, hey, you know, go in the morning or go in the afternoon where the light is soft. But here you are, like, just taking advantage of something totally different, something that's just so harsh, and people would probably stay at home. I probably would be stay at home by that time. But you take that into advantage, so that's really cool. So uh, can I just say something for that? Because yeah, for sure. It's also, it also came through um, necessity because I'm, I'm a stay-at-home dad and I look after my kids. And when they were little, so now they're teenagers, but when they were little, it's like during the day was the only time I could go out and have my own life. So it, so I was like, I felt like I'm the lunchtime photographer, you know, so <laughs> I, I'm in the middle of the day, here I'm out. And then I just kind of had to do with what I got. And then that's another layer that kind of added on to that. Yeah, that's. I think that's that's also an important fact. Um, you know, a lot of a lot of photographers out there, especially the the one that kind of just started, um, see those explosive sunset or sunrise, you know, for um, landscape or you know a, a special lighting, and we are so fixated with those lighting um, that you know if we go to the location and then we didn't get that light, we would just pack our gear and go home. Which, you know. You said it perfectly. Sometimes you just have to take advantage of where what what what's the condition that you have. So that's that's really amazing. Yeah. So what um what was your what's your biggest inspiration if there is any? Um, you know, what what how does this creativity mind works? Like um, you know, what sparks this creativity, I suppose? Oh, that's a really hard question for me. Um, <laughs> it's like and I just thought back, I mean, I mean, the Magnum photographers used to inspire me. And now, because I do photography for a long time and like 20 years intensively, really, or, or obsessively, you could say. Um, so now at the moment, my inspiration is really kind of trying to 
go deeper in my own personal work and vision and whatever that means. Uh, I don't even know what that means, but but that's the kind of place I want to go to. Um, so I'm kind of work on projects. Uh, I just finished a book um, from a Japan holiday that I uh, made three books out of it. One family, one street photography, and one uh, that's about to do with, uh, you know, the, the temporariness of, of everything, um, you know, how life ends. And, and, and that's just me, you know, being in middle age and trying to get my head around that I'm going to die in maybe <laughs> 40 years or <laughs> maybe sooner. Um, and just kind of, yeah, being more aware of my time's limited here. And, and it just comes out in the work I shoot naturally. And then it's like sequencing and putting it together and, and finding the theme. Um, and, I, and, and just how I, I photograph usually it's very much based on serendipity. I kind of go through everything a little bit with a, uh, something pops up and then I go, oh, that's interesting. And I take note and, and then over time I work out what are the important themes in my work or what are themes in my work that just naturally come up and trying to kind of dig in on that and, and move forward. And so it's all like, yeah, it's, it's a little bit like um, just finding myself and photography helps me to kind of put a light to what's in my subconscious. And then I can learn, oh, okay, that's going on. Because the subconscious is always like maybe a year ahead or half a year ahead of what you actually know, what's going on. And then, and I'm just trying to combine it with my photography and, and learn about myself and my feelings and, my, and, uh, and also have fun and just um, like, uh, we've been in New Zealand in January, which was very, very good timing and very lucky. And I was so excited about you know, discovering all, I mean, we go for those beautiful nature walks and seeing those amazing things and I'm, and I'm there with my camera as I can capture it and I'm so excited. And I think photography, with photography, the, the whole world's like a treasure box really. And it's just like going out and discovering what's around the corner here and what's there. And, and that brings a lot of joy into, for me and, and capturing that is a lot more fun for me than just seeing it. So because then I guess I can then go, hey, look at this, look, look what I've seen, you know, and, and when I go with my family, I go, oh, look at this, it's amazing. They're like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> and, I go, and once I take a picture, sometimes they go, oh, that's actually not bad. <laughs> yeah, that's, um, that's, um, it's really funny, isn't it? Like, um, and it's, it's really cool as well, like, um, how, so basically you're saying, you know, you use photography as a way to express yourself and, you know, express your kind of inner thought and where you're kind of going or what's in your head mm -hmm. in terms of photograph yeah so like that i find that it's really um definitely one of the reason that a lot, a lot of us um do photography as a creative outlet um so how how does that um you know um how do you look beyond the ordinary? Um, you know, because uh, I see a lot of your photos. You 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 focus on things that people wouldn't have focused on. Um, just the 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 quirky things, the little small details. And that was the one thing that I really noticed. Um, you know, when I was um there next to you, kind of watch your work. It was just like, wow. That was just like, how did he think of that? It's just like blow you out of your mind because it's not something that people would normally think about. Mm. I mean, it comes, to, I think there's two different layers of it. One is um, I'm not interested in just another pretty picture. So I'm, I, I, you know, that's how you start off or that's how I started off, um, you know, trying to emulate the photographers I've seen and emulate, um, you know, the great photos. Oh, you know, Christian Fletcher took this photo or something and you know, or Ken Duncan and you have that in mind when you go to AS Rock and you're trying to take kind of that similar photo and then you're very proud when it just looks kind of similar. And then, um, and then the next step was like um, more finding my own voice and and because um, I mean emulating is is a great thing to learn photography, but then it's really like it might have been uh, when I went to Photo Free or which I don't know might have been two thousand three or four. Um, there was Photo Free and then I went there and I seen photography that kind of I found confronting as like what this is like supposed to be good photography, you know, because it wasn't just pretty pictures and then. And that kind of really opened up uh, my, my world and seeing, ah, oh, this is photography and, and that is photography. And then 
going, okay, what, what is it that I, um, and I guess then I took it a little bit as a free pass to explore, go a little, I don't know, more me personal. And for a number of years, I was really struggling with that, that, uh, you know, like this is popular and you feel like you're supposed to do what's popular, right? But then it's also, but I prefer those pictures, you know, and then eventually it, it, I ended up winning prizes, I'm winning documentary photographer of the year in, at the IPP with my own picture, but that, that year I put my own pictures in, I, I actually won. And that was like amazing. And, and then that really manifested in my, okay, I, I basically, I won those prizes because I did what I did my own thing anyway. And then it's after that, it became really easy to, um, just follow my own thing and nowadays I just do my photography the way in my personal work I do my photography that the way I want to do it and then um and it's very easy just to and and then the other part of that is I go out and I try I basically go out with an open mind and just look around and see what I find and just trust in my gut instinct and trust in serendipity and and often start with light you know when i see some interesting light somewhere and then i look closer and then i find something and then if i react to it then then i start taking pictures of it and then i mean obviously if i react to it then there's there's something there that interests me and i just kind of follow that so yeah like a treasure hunt like like in new zealand uh, yeah that's that's, and that's then really it just, cool they way. come out the way i like it in a way which there's not that many pretty pictures <laughs> in the end but i i don't know like Oh, they're a yeah. little more, more cluttered. They're not as clean. Um, I think I could shoot a lot more cleaner if I, and I do that more in my commercial work where things are more orderly and clean. And in my personal work, it's sometimes maybe a little messy, but then still some structure to it. And, and I guess my brain's a bit messy, so it just comes out like that. So that's, that's really cool to hear. And, um, you know, it's, uh, I think a lot, a lot of people out there might have that thinking of, or pressure, I should say, or pressure of mm. pr producing something that, you know, is beautiful um, as what the status quo accepted. So that's great to hear yeah. that you say that because, um, you know, it was a testament to itself that you, you were able to win an award just by being original. So, um, you know, what sort of advice would you say to people who who, who kind of just started and struggle to find their voice or, you know, try to find to to be where you are right now um, and they are still in that emulation sort of period? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, just be yourself, really. It's It sounds simple and it is, it is hard because, I mean, we're all trying to fit in, like all of us. And... Um, I mean, the older you grow, maybe then you have a bit more, fuck uh, that, I just do my own thing. I think age probably really helps. It also really helps that I, I had recognition with doing what I do. And, but you know, it, it took like 10 years to get there. And I was sometimes really torn and not knowing what I'm supposed to do. And, and um, but I learned by winning awards, I learned that you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Like it's, it's, you just do your own thing. And, and if you get recognition, that's great. And if you don't rec get recognition, at least you do work that's meaningful to you. And, and that's, I think that's a, a bigger price than winning awards by ending up having photos that mean something to you. And I got a couple of projects that, that, you know, they go a lot deeper and they're, they're a lot more, they're kind of important. They're, they're in my life, they're, they're, they're kind of key, they mark sort of key points and um, that came out in photography. And I have a lot of pretty pictures that yeah, they're really nice and you could hang up the wall, but I don't really, I don't have no deeper connection to them. So they, they're just kind of nice, you know, and maybe they get likes on Facebook or Instagram, but they don't, they don't do anything other than just being pretty to me. And, and I guess for your listeners, if you, if you just go out and you do, you know, you do what you connect with and, and you do things to your why. And your why just means you like it like this and you like high contrast or low contrast and you just do that. And, and don't worry about, um, you know, the, the likes and what, how it resonates with other people initially because if you just post it, you just post you what you really like to do. Over a period of time, you will attract the people who connect to that kind of thing. 
and then you know in the long run you're gonna get your your recognition by by people liking what you do um and don't worry so much about the gatekeepers um you know like we all we we get recognition from our friends our friends go oh this is amazing this is awesome you know and but we want it from some strange unknown people like in the industry or somewhere that that we don't even know um but we want the recognition from them and and I mean, what's what's more important, your friends or some random stranger, really? Um, so put emphasis on that too. Uh, just play, like you know, move move the blocks around a bit and give yourself the freedom to just go and explore. Yeah, that's that's really good advice. Um, I think that's uh, it's really powerful to say that um, you know, um, do what express yourself and do what's um do what's right for you and let th those people that resonate with you follow you and not worry about those people who doesn't follow you um, or doesn't resonate with you. So I think that's a really good advice. Um, so, you know, you were sharing earlier about um, meeting up with this uh, group of photographers and they were going out together and um, that kind of sparks back your, your photography after kind of a while. Um, how important it is to have a community and you know being able to be part of community in terms of um, progressing your photography I guess not only just progressing your photography but also enjoying photography yeah I think it's like for me it's more enjoying photography and also enjoying connecting to people and and sometimes uh, I guess we feel you know like and I heard this from a lot of photographers or artists they they feel a little isolated. I feel like, oh, I'm a bit weird. And then you go to a photographer's meet and you go, oh, I'm not the only weird one. There's, there's lots of us. And that's, that's a really nice thing to, you know, I mean, I have, I have friends or we have family friends. We have friends who get my photography and we have friends who just don't get, you know, that they, they like the pretty pictures and they go, oh, that's great. But if I show them like my arty book, then they go, oh, it's all a bit strange and random. Um, you know, not not everybody's gonna get it, and and yeah, with photography mates, um, it's nice to meet those people. And you can, I mean, human connection is like when you, when you look at life. I think that's that's the biggest thing. Like your family and friends comes. Uh, I think when you're old, it comes before everything else. Um, it will crystallize for I think for most people, and photography is like a way into make friends and to meet people and be don't feel so lonely and isolated, I guess. So. Yeah, it's, it's actually really interesting that you say that because sometimes photography for me is a good, it's, it's a thing to run away and actually be alone and isolated. <clears throat> and mm. I think it's one of the reasons why I like to do astrophotography because, you know, it was so serene, like, you know, being out there at night and yet you, you don't feel alone because, you know, you get to enjoy all these stars and, it just give me a perception that there is somebody out there. So, um, yeah, it's it's really it's really yeah, interesting yeah. to see that different perspective and you know how everyone have that different perspective. Um, so yeah, what? But, sorry, yeah, keep going. Yeah, but I, I totally get what you do, and I do that too. And um, and I'm an introvert, and I need time on on my own. But then it's it's also really nice to be kind of connected to to the photo photographic community. Um, like for me, it's it's a real benefit to be, yeah. you know, to have that community. Yeah, my think, friends there, and then, yeah, but then I, also going out alone. I mean, my best pictures I usually take when I'm on my own because that's where you can really focus and connect with with what you're photographing. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's very interesting. I mean, like one of the things that I like about hanging out with like other photographers is just the inspiration and different perspective that I get learned from them. And you know, like for example, when I was meeting you, or like, um, for example, now I'm part of the collective um, exhibition shots um, photo exhibition, and that was oh, cool. that that was a big sort of um, mind shift in my photography because I saw some photography that I've never seen before and I was like wow like you know possibilities just endless so so that's really cool that you know um you kind of have that realization and you know follow that your own path um so how how do you translate a lot of this in terms of um to to your um to your uh, professional work you know because then you know you, 
how do you how do people kind of see it's like okay I'll, I'll hire Johannes because he's really good when a lot of your photo are more like you know really artsy and really yeah, niche yeah, I should yeah. say um, that a lot yeah, of people like you say hard to resonate with yeah I, I mean the ones I post are mostly mostly like what I consider the cool photos and then um, so there's there's you know the performance ones a lot of them are part of most of them and some event photos sometimes I post, but mostly it's like work, I finish a job and I kind of move on to the next one. Um, so it kind of works because I, um, I have enough people who know me and know my work and, and I worked for them previously or they hear recommendations. So my, my business kind of doesn't run online. It, it's just like word of mouth and, and uh, I don't actually post that much. I, only, I started posting a little bit more um, with the COVID since I lost all my work. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should post a bit of, uh, look, this is what I can do kind of thing um, for you. <laughs> um, yeah, the business is, it's, it's a little bit different as in, I photograph to, you know, you need a product or you need a promo shot or you need a photo for a specific purpose. And I'm trying to deliver on that purpose and provide value to you. Um, and, I've been very lucky because I, I shot weddings for almost 15 years and then I realized I don't have the passion for it anymore and I thought it's time to move on and I was really worried that you know I don't get um, enough business after because that, that was my bread and butter and then I just realized very quickly that oh, I, had, I said no to a lot of jobs when you know, when, when people ring and say, oh, can you do this next week? And often they go, can you do this next week? And I always had to say no, because I've been booked out with weddings. And I, I didn't really realize that so, so much. Um, so that really helped. And I started teaching. And then over the, over the years, I built up uh, performance photography, um, especially at Fringe and a little bit during the year too. Um, that that kind of, yeah, just, just, um, just by doing it, passion first for passion for a while and then you know works kind of crystallized out of that and then more work crystallized out of that and nowadays um i don't shoot many shows for free anymore so to speak um you know they're, they're, most of them are paid and um but when i shoot free i'm shooting very different i'm very, shooting very like I'm, I'm trying to get artistic photos which are sometimes better or i find it better but they're really hard to photograph and you miss a lot of good shots if you follow down that artistic rabbit hole because then I go blurry and I go you know all sorts of stuff because I'm really uh, in my personal work I'm experimenting like a lot and I just I just play around in a way and through that playing I'm learning and become a better photographer which then feeds into my professional work that you know I have all those tricks up my sleeve that I could you know with this scenario I could do this and that scenario I could do that and I, I um, you know break it up here a little bit and there and 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 uh, also realized over the years people book me for my art history not just for commercially pretty like you know nice nice images they also want a little bit of maybe extra feeling or something yeah that's that's really cool because um you know at the end of the day it's it's come back to what you say about being yourself and then just let those people who can resonate you know um come to you and not worry about those so that that really really good to see how that translate just not only in in the personal side but also to to professional side so i, I want to talk more about your um even photography side of things, you know, you, you take a, amazing event photos, um, performances and stuff like that. Um, where is a lot of this um, angle came from, you know, like the, the creativity and the, you know, playing around with the lights and so forth, the, the poses and, and so forth? Well, depending on, on where it is, it, it always, often always starts with light. I look for good light. And um, as an event photographer, especially a performance photographer, you, you are a little bit at the mercy of the lighting guy or the lighting girl. Um, I shot a show at Connections last week. They had amazing lighting, you know, and it, it makes my job to create powerful images like much easier, even though I was <laughs> piling the dots like a crazy man. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, like it, it, if they light it well and they have to smoke for, for a bit of extra effect and all that, that, that really adds. Or like in Fringe, you know, the Spiegel tent shows they're so much better than some of the other venues where you just have one spotlight 
and that's about it. And then you, you're a lot more limited in what you can do as a photographer. Um, so light comes first and then the performance, because I mostly shoot live performance, it's, um, it's really, by, by doing it a lot and by doing a lot of photography, there's this kind of sixth sense to know when to press the button and things line up to you, you kind of know. I mean, you, you keep a light, you know, um, is obviously something I pay uh, a lot of attention towards and then the performance too. And then, you know, you zoom in and you zoom out and, and just trying to anticipate what's going to happen next, uh, which then experience, experience really helps, um, you know, like you've seen a lot of shows and then when they do certain things, you think, ah, oh, this is probably going to, something, something big's going to happen maybe soon um, that I better be ready to, to capture that, you know, or with fire, you know, when I go fire, you know, you have to then underexpose before it starts. So you, you're ready and then, and you hope you do it right. And because there's only one go some often, uh, and then, you know, zoom out a bit because often that, that fire goes up. So it's just, yeah, experience and, and trial and error and, and, and everything um, I do, you, I kind of put in a memory bank, you know, it's like anything you ever see, ah, oh, that works, I put in a memory bank. Um, and I just kind of keep building on that. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I do that as well in terms of the memory bank. I think like, you know, you, you find a little quirky um, a technique that comes out really nice or that you really like it. You just go like, oh yeah, that's that's a good technique. You put it and, and then, you know, eventually you, you have so many library you could play around with. But um, and then, what a, sorry, yeah. Can I just uh, add on to this? The other thing, the, the obvious thing that I have mentioned is, is also the performers. I mean, they, they bring their own artistry and creativity um, to the stage and their talent to the stage. And that it kind of makes my job easy in a way. Um, you know, because I'm, I don't have to make it all up. They, they create this world that I then really just kind of capture sometimes. Um, and sometimes hopefully with my own. own so with the, uh, with the live performances, um, you know, I see a lot of uh, your work with the performance photography. It's, um, it's, it's, it's usually on a, a, a dark condition, right? It's really um, dark and then you got maybe a spotlight and hence what you say about how light is important. Um, Take us through in terms of um, how, how do you go about and thinking about, you know, because the, the, the most important things in, in photography is light, timing, and placement, right? Those three really drives um, the, the type of photo that you get. So how do you go about this thing? And how do you, um, you know, how do you know when it's, um, how do you decide, I suppose, not to know? Because, you know, knowing can be from um, experience. But how do you decide when you um, want to go to this angle, that angle, or overexpose, underexpose, and so forth? Um, a lot of it is, it's, it's a bit like being a documentary photographer or a wedding photographer where you just, you kind of photograph and you anticipate what's going to happen next. And you think, is this going to be better from this side or that side or or sometimes um I, I like to move around so it's not all just the same angle so it's not just you know same angle as as a tv camera would be which often is the best angle like the front and center you know but you know if you run around and you shoot from the side and up closer and shoot up then you just get more variety for for the client um and then you you yeah, it's really like trusting my gut instinct a lot. Or I'm going, oh my God, this is going to happen. I better shoot off to the middle again because um, this needs to be photographed from the middle. So it's, it's. Um, I think previous visualization plays a, a big role in that. Where you, you, you know, experience with performance, especially where you can anticipate. You kind of know a few things by seeing a lot of shows that uh, this might go this way, that might go that way. And... Um, and then yeah, and then just paying attention to light and your camera settings and and underexpose is like I mostly expose more to the right, so I don't really try to blow out highlights. But then sometimes I just go darker, and then it's it's just I say something and I I react to it and I go oh, I'm gonna photograph it this way or that way, and 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 everything happens so fast that you really just kind of. I don't know, like uh, you know, it's like instinct driven. Cool. Oh, yeah, that's because uh, yeah. you go to this um to this um performances the first time, isn't it? It's not like you go there once and then you kind of watch a it lot again. of yeah. Most shows I, I shoot one time. Sometimes I I'm lucky I shoot 
um, you know, like um, the same people who put shows on and then some parts of that are similar. I was, I was seeing a couple of performers that I re-photograph and then sometimes I do the same shows or what I start off the same and then change it later. So I, it gives me more sense of what might happen. But yeah, a lot of them is just um, reacting to because yeah, every time they put on a different show, it's usually it is a different show and then then you just kind of, but that also keeps it really fresh. I mean, if I sh photograph the same shot twice, I could, I could improve some photos of that, definitely. But then by sh photographing a shot once, it uh, it keeps it fresh and it's better for the budget of the company. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I wouldn't mind shooting it twice. <laughs> <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, look, uh, that's that's really cool advice, and uh, it's yeah, I find it. I mean, I've never really done it myself, but just in my head thinking about man, how do you know when, you know, things going to happen and, you know, when kind of placing yourself and especially when you saw it for the first time, it's it's almost like you always have to be ready or something like that, eh? Yeah. I mean, I, I take a lot of photos usually. It's yeah. <laughs> it's not like film. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's a good thing about the digital camera, right? Mm. Yeah, cool. So, no, that's that's awesome. Um, I love how... Um, how you share your perspective, how you um, share that, you know, um, go with your gut. Um, I think you said that a lot in, in this um, conversation, conversation mm. is that go with your gut um, and trust yourself and express yourself. Um, I think those are the few things and that are really important. Um, so if you were to go back, let's say, you know, um, let's say you wake up tomorrow and you lost all your skills and you have to start all over again how would you do it like you know for those of you for those of the listeners who kind of just get started and want to get to it you know how would you do it what are the steps that you would take um so what i what i really um if i lose everything i kind of want to lose it in a way that i also don't remember that i had the skill before so i can just be fresh and the the beauty is like uh, the beauty is when you don't do photography for very long that you have this kind of innocence and everything is new and exciting and fresh and i don't have that anymore because i've been doing it so long and yes i can get uh, probably a really good quality consistently but the images that excite me for me it's much harder to get those images because you just don't find them very often and when you when you're just starting out, you know, like an image that maybe five years from that time you took it, you think, oh, this is amazing. And three years later, you go, oh, well, actually, it, it wasn't. Um, but at the time, it's amazing. And, and a lot more things are amazing. And that 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 is really, um, it's so beautiful. And I think it needs to be enjoyed. And, and rather than trying to be somewhere at the top, whatever the top might be, because, um, you know, that all those things are kind of, I feel like they're a little bit concepts, you know. Um, I mean, I don't see myself at the top. I just do my photography and, and it's, it's really great that, uh, and I'm very lucky that I have a lot of people connect to my work. Um, you know, I, I meet people who tell me that they really love my photography and I really value that and, I'm, and I appreciate it. Um, at the same time, I, I just kind of do it for myself. It's, it's kind of a little bit selfish, you know, exploring my little rabbit hole of photography, so to speak. And, and um, yeah, and, and each stage you are on, like whether you're just starting out or whether you're doing this for 10 or 20 years, it's, it's, there's a benefit to it. And you, but you can't have everything. And so just enjoy the stage you're in and don't worry so much about, I guess, external validation. That's, I think, a really big tip. And just kind of do your own thing and, and play and feel free and try not to force things too much. Um, you know, I see a lot of people that kind of creative the big block um, you know because that they kind of want to do something but then it, and I even I do that myself and um, you know like a year and a half ago I was like I wanted to do some great project you know I'm thinking about the outcome instead of thinking about the actual project and doing the project kind of freely you know I'm, I'm thinking about the outcome and because I want the outcome to be great I put pressure on myself to even um, you know even get started and and can be blocked to even start, um, which is 
are not really at the opposite of when you start out and pick up a camera and everything is just kind of playful and nice. And um, so we, I guess we're all trying to keep more of that. So, and that, that I would really enjoy, like, you know, just starting out and, and not knowing that I was good and then just, you know, kind of just playing around. <laughs> That's that's cool. I I, th I think that's really cool. Um, you know the fact that you, you you say just focus on on having fun and enjoying it. That's that's really amazing. Um, oh, just off that conversation right there. Um, you say something about uh, you know just just kind of go your own way. Um, enjoy it. Have that um that first perspective and ha enjoy that first back first perspective. And as you kind of get get along um the more you do it, that, that excitement kind of go away. So for yourself, um, you know, how, how do you keep that excitement going? Like to, to not burn out in photography, okay. to, to keep enjoying photography. I mean, I burn out once or twice a year, usually, um, usually when I work too much and, um, it's kind of, I, I've gotten, how do you say, I, I'm all right with that. And I, I now I need to back off. Like I just can't work all the time. Um, but then, and then there's, I also lose my mojo at least once a year, if not three times a year. When I lose my mojo that I don't want to, don't feel like picking up the camera, then I usually force myself to pick up the camera and just go, you know, I feel like oh, everything's a bit jaded and a bit boring or whatever. And, and I'm not really in the mood and I force myself to, to go and take pictures, you know, um, and by going out, I find, you know, once I find something that I go, oh, this is really cool, then that gives me the first spark. And then it leads to, oh, that's really cool too. And then, you know, I, I got three of really cool things. And then, then I'm back in, you know, enjoying photography and, and um, doing it. Um, so for me, it really works to push myself and force myself not to, not to um, or force myself to pick up the camera and then, and that they'll, I'll learn from that, that, Hey, I really love this. Um, because by doing it, I realize how much I actually love just capturing moments and, and, and looking at things. Um, because it's also, it reminds me of when I've been out on a photo walk, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, like, Oh, isn't that nice here? Yes. I don't have the perfect clouds for this perfect landscape shot that, you know, you're probably hoping for, you know, but, I still find things here and there. And, and isn't it just nice just to be out in that beautiful environment and soak up the atmosphere, even though it's not perfect for photography. And then I thought, oh, you know, those poor landscape photographer who make a living, they go out and they think, ah, shit, you know, clouds are wrong. And it's, it's, it's the same sunset at the beach, but it's two different approaches, right? One is like, oh, I'm so happy I can be here and enjoy this. And the other is like, oh shit, it's not working. Um, because I want perfection and perfection doesn't happen every day. Um, and I'm trying to be more on that, that first one where I just trying to enjoy my environment. Um, even if I don't get the perfect pictures and it, I am quite fussy, I must say. It, that's actually <laughs> really interesting that you say that. Cause uh, I think, um, I'm not, well, maybe I just speaking for myself, but I feel like a lot of photographers out there are really perfectionists about their art. Like, you know, they, they really want to make sure that everything's right, that, you know, that the noise is really low. Well, most of the, most of the time, like the viewer actually just enjoy it the way it is. So wh what have you, you know, what advice or what have you got um, to say to the listeners out there who are really um, basically stop, um, progressing further or stop taking more photo because they're looking for that perfect one photo. Yes. Um, like open your eyes and, and, and I guess, um, you know, you go down to the beach, let's just use the beach as an example. You go down and, and you want to take this amazing picture of say Sugarloaf rock, you know, like a, a iconic WI location. Um, and then the clouds is, you know, the clouds, you take a really great photo there when the clouds, a landscape is, is always to do, the clouds have to be in the right spot so it frames it just the right way, right? And you want to match that with sunset time. If those two things don't match up, you know, you can go there like 200 times a year and maybe five or six times a year, you get something that's close to perfect. And maybe once a year or once every two years from that spot that you think is the best spot to photograph, you might only get that once. And then, but the thing is like when the clouds are a little off, you can move left or right 
to find a subject, you know, so you don't get it from the perfect spot, but that just by moving around a lot, we can, you know, work compositionally. And then when you open your eyes, you're going to find a lot of other things, you know, there's this, this side rock on Sugarloaf that looks a little bit like a hawk, you know, that you can just take a photo of that. And, and last time I was there after sunset, I was like seagulls landing on and flying off. And so I took kind of, you know, zoomed in uh, with a big lens and, and took photos of that, um, you know, with blurry birds and, and it's really like keeping an open mind, you know, like so look around, keep an open mind and don't get stuck on, I want to take this particular photo. And but it's more like reacting to what's around you and making, making the most of it, working with what you got in, and then looking, you know, and keep, keep looking, um, see what you find. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. That is really awesome. Um, like to get those kind of photo, I would imagine, cause you know, those, those story that you just told me there, um, I was just thinking that requires a lot of observation and actually, you know, looking into the different thing and looking actually quite deep into the scene, right? Um, how, how how long do you usually spend in a spot to um, until you can, you know, come up or notice those quirky things that most people don't notice it? Yeah, I don't know. I, I totally... I'm, I don't have much patience. <laughs> I realized really? I thought about taking up painting and it's like when I see them, I spend like three hours and a painting and it's on quarter finished or something. It's like, fuck it. <laughs> it's not for me. Um, yeah, I, I, as long if I don't find anything interesting, then I just usually keep walking, you know, walking around. And then and if I find something interesting, then I stay and linger on. And, and then it depends on, because, you know, often the light's good when, when this happens. And then, so either now I got a couple of hours, I go out, you know, go photographing for an hour or two. And then, uh, then I need to go home because it's like, it's time. So I just wander around and really just, you know, I go to an area where I think oh, there could be something. And then sometimes the light works and sometimes the light doesn't work. So it's really like sometimes you go out and you think oh, there's nothing here, you know, and then you just keep walking and, um, you know, it's always good to be out. That's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> and then, but you, you have to be out there because it's like hunting. And, and then sometimes, you know, when I think oh, there's nothing here, then oh, I see this tree and I'm really drawn towards this tree, you know, like because the branches kind of reach up and obviously it's something I really connect with reaching up to the sky um, at the moment sort of thing. And, and then, you know, and then I photograph, find a good composition for that branch and, and that, that, you know, that I find so, so amazing at that time. And then the next thing is a bird lands on it. And then, oh, you know, there's a, there's a little extra something. And then I wait, wait for the bird to be in the right spot. And then, and there's like me, like spending eight minutes just photographing this, this tree with a bird. And then I think, oh, it's time to move on. But, you know, like the bird hasn't been there at the perfect spot, but it's good enough and, and I'm kind of, I don't feel like engaged anymore. So I move on. I, I guess that's when I move on and I don't feel engaged. Wow. That's really interesting to hear that you're, you're now a patient guy. Cause uh, you know, I, I thought a lot of that uh, photo requires a lot of patience and, you know, um, observation and actually watching, you know, for a while until you kind of see those things. That's yeah. Usually. Yeah. Like uh, contrary to Carl J. Brissot, I, I don't, I don't, usually wait more than five minutes when I see like a, an area I think oh, that'd be a really cool picture I'm waiting for someone to come through then yeah five minutes is I find it very hard to stand <laughs> on a street corner without feeling like I'm, I'm going to be uh, being up to something better so um, but by moving around I mean that that's that's a downside to that because I, I sometimes don't have this you know the perfect composition for people just walking through but then I'm, I'm not interested in just pictures of people walking for example um so when i walk the street and i might see a character that i might think oh you know that looked really interesting and i know over there there's this doorway and then so i kind of shoot off and, and trying to get them at that that doorway or or just kind of react to the scene um much more and i think the, the good side of that is that the photos are kind of more fresh they're, they're not as staged so to speak and and by I think that really worked in the long run for me because sometimes you're lucky and you see something that's that's out of the ordinary and I, I obviously then try to capture it and and also try to capture it well and not just you know just point the camera i'm thinking about okay 
where are they going? What's here? Like basically, what, what can I work with here? Um, you know, say if you're at the beach and that's this um, rainbow, you know, and then obviously, you know, the, the normal thing is to photograph the rainbow, but then the next step is to step back and go, what else is around? Is there, can, is there something I can use with the rainbow? You know, some static element or is there, hey, there's a couple, hey, guys, do you mind if I, you know, take a picture of you in the rainbow and, and just kind of work with what you got or there's a dog and you chase the dog and try to put that in with the rainbow maybe or something, I don't know, especially when he puts his legs up. Um, so that, that'd be a picture anyway. Sorry. Um, yes, I, I, I react to and, and, and trying to make things work with, with what I got a lot. Awesome, yeah, so it's more like, so literally what you're saying there, you just basically capture a moment when it's there, like you, you don't wait for it to happen, you don't stage it, you just, you see it, it happens, then you capture it pretty yeah, much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow, that's amazing. Well, thanks a lot, Johannes, um, you know, it's been a awesome, um, interesting conversation there, and um, there's a lot of things to, um, to learn from that just um, both uh, philosophically as well as um, technically in photography so that's great like um, thanks a lot for sharing that um, so share with us um, what what kind of because you say you, you're like working in project do you have a project that you're working on at the moment yeah I have one project I, I worked on for a week last year it's called what's it called silently falling apart and then I'm totally blocked to kind of restart it again. So that's going to be an exhibition in, in the long run, maybe maybe in 22. <laughs> um, maybe even later, because it's 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 a project that I, I'm I'm trying to go deeper with this one and I'm trying to to really kind of shoot it till I feel like I got nothing left to give in this project, not not to finish prematurely. Um, yeah, so that, that might be a while. And I that's, the resistance is big for, for this project. So I'm kind of have to work with my own fears of overcoming and, and try not to put pressure on myself. And, and I, you know, there's a couple of blocks I've shifted in my head. So I give myself an opening to, to tell myself, uh, just be playful, just just basically see what happens. You know, don't, don't make this big, uh, deep thing where you don't want to go into. Just kind of be playful and see what happens. Um, that's That's where I'm going. But lately i've been really busy with work again and then and it keeps going there's school holidays and then there's fringe and then uh there's after fringe and that's kind of been exhibition at team digital next year we planned uh for the book project and and things that just keep moving yeah awesome, awesome. I'll, I'll get there i'll get there <laughs> <laughs> well, i'm glad to hear I'm, I'm i'm looking forward to that but for the listener who's uh, wanting to hear more about you and wanting to learn more about you, where what what is the best place for them to find you? So the best place is my website. That's uh, at www.johannes.com.au. So Johannes is J-O-H-A-N-N-E-S. Um, and there's I sign up form to my newsletter. I started a newsletter a couple of months ago. That's kind of inspirational newsletter that I show a bit of what I do. And then, and it's it's really meant to kind of be more inspirational and and not like um, you know, it's like yeah, it's got my voice a little bit, and, and I think it's it, it's quite nice. And then there's a photo meet. I'm gonna do a bi-monthly photo meet if you're from Perth. So that's where you're gonna find out about that and and a bit of productivity tips, like yeah, a bit of like five different little things and and that's uh keeps me uh on my toes and on top of everything else <laughs> and then awesome. facebook and instagram johannes reinhardt yeah awesome awesome yeah no no worries um i will make sure that i have all that in um in the description so um if you didn't get that don't worry it's all gonna be in description but um look thanks a lot johannes uh, for being with us and um yeah that, that was a great um conversation there um yeah. And the Wiki Hunters, so thank you very much for tuning in. And um, like I say, if you want to learn more about Johannes, um, you can um, look it up in the description below. Um, you can check out some of his um, art photos as well as um, his performance photo. I just love his performance photo. It's, it's, so, it's so unique, I suppose. It's just out there. Um, and... Don't forget to um, subscribe below and follow um, 
you know, let, let me know in the comment below, what do you think of this conversation? Let me know if you um, try some of um, Johanna's um, uh, tips there about coming up with something really different and something that really interesting that helps you to express yourself instead of just, um, you know, taking photo that is the most popular one out there. But thanks a lot for tuning in Wiki Hunters, and I will see you again next week. Until next time. Thanks, Johannes. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Thank you, Stanley. Bye. See ya.